Welcome to Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Palmer. It's in the Inland Empire. I'm so proud to be wearing this button, San Bernardino Strong, given to me by a council member in your city. He is Kerry Davis, of course, the mayor of San Bernardino, and you are San Bernardino Strong. Um, I want to talk about some exciting events going on in your city. You've been fighting through bankruptcy and poverty and homelessness and December 2nd, and yet fighting back. We are, and uh, I'm happy to be here again with please, you. So thank please, thank you very much. Um, Let's talk about your downtown because that was a sore spot for many years, and yet, wow, so much is going on downtown. The Carousel Mall, it's gonna be re-energized finally. Yes. Tell us. Well, uh, several months ago, our economic development team put together a request. They sent it out throughout the country right. to developers to respond and then they went through a selection process and the final selection was AECOM. Right. Uh, they're very strong in this type of development so we're very happy to have them as a partner with the redevelopment of the Carousel Mall. And I must tell you for those that have not been to that mall it is very large. A lot of parking so if that mall starts humming it really will be of tremendous benefit to your city. Well, and it, and it has that transportation hub. Right, as well, be, explain, yeah. please. So the uh, uh, Metrolink will then be coming directly into the downtown, right. uh, together with the transit hub for all of the buses that go through there. So um, the Carousel Mall is within about a half a block or so from that. Mm -hmm. So for those who are looking for a downtown to be able to locate and reside with the transportation next door. Right. It's, uh, it's a great potential. Um, you'll be able to get throughout uh, Southern California, you know, and not have to, if you didn't want to own right. a car, you could just about get anywhere. That's exciting. There's one business that has really led the revitalization of the area, and it's always one that causes the catalytic consequence that really sparks what's going on. And in this case, I understand it's a movie theater. Uh, uh, it's the, a movie our, theater. our Regal Theater. Yeah, it, tell us it, about Regal Theaters. Um, it has uh, uh, been recognized as one of the top performers within the Regal system. What top so, 100? Think about right. that. In the entire nation, Regal is a nationwide chain. To think that San Bernardino, which three years ago was filing for bankruptcy, is now providing this entity a top 100 performer? That's stunning. Well, it also sends the message to the community. It's a safe place to come. Right. Uh, well we stated. Have, and we have our California Theater there, which has been a long-standing uh, uh, venue for our symphony, uh, one of the few symphonies still remaining. Mm. Uh, even though the bankruptcy has uh, uh, certainly taken a toll, there are some major cultural refinement uh, centers in San Bernardino that uh, we're very proud of. And I understand as part of the Regal redevelopment, as part of the Carousel redevelopment, you're looking at bringing in more restaurants, factory outlets, um, other retail stores, some mixed use, maybe have some stores on the bottom, apartments on top. The uh, AECOM is, I think, going to be uh, soon presenting their uh, their rendition of what their uh, uh, their vision is of mm -hmm. that whole area, and it will include uh, the uh, that the Fourth Street corridor. When I think about the fact that in just a few weeks you will be offering your second State of the City, is that Correct. right? It's been quite a year. It's been quite a year. December second occurred, but since December second. San Bernardino is really humming on all cylinders. Well, the first state of the city was certainly a um, a different state of the city than this one will be. Right. That one was to recognize the realities of some of the difficult decisions that had to be exercised. Mm -hmm. And the city council has done that. We have made those difficult decisions that will help us to emerge through bankruptcy and continue to be able to then build that launching ground for the future. But I have to admit, when we spoke in December, right after the incident um, at the IRC, I would not have predicted that at your 2016 State of the City, there would be such a sense of purpose, pride, and optimism. 
It's amazing these last three, four months. Well, and it, but it, it shows that even though that we've been in bankruptcy, bankruptcy has not done a define us. Mm -hmm. We're going to emerge from that, and we're going to be stronger as a result. I want to talk about the bankruptcy, because like you said, there are issues surrounding the bankruptcy. And while it seems to be that the city is heading in the right direction, there is a need to save some resources. And so the question has uh, been presented, shall the city of San Bernardino maintain its own fire service? And certainly uh, that would be the preferred if it was possible fiscally, uh, but the need to be able to raise the level of service for our fire uh, uh, needs uh, requires that we actually make that difficult decision. And Thank let's you. talk about that decision because it is a difficult one. And that decision uh, has been made and the decision has been to have the county annex in the city for the purposes of fire services. Did I say that accurately? Correct. It's a little complicated, but to simplify, the county would be taking over. That is correct. Why, what's the annex element of it? Just for you know, insiders like us that like to understand the ins and outs. Well, uh, another al alternative would have been to contract with the county. Okay. That contracting would have been a different, uh, uh, it would be an ongoing negotiation I as see. those, uh, co that contract would expire depending on what the term of it would be. So this, this then is actually a more permanent uh, uh, relationship right. so that now the county actually then is running it and they then are responsible for budgeting for it. Now to engage in the annexation you have to go through what's known as LAFCO, the Local Agency Formation Commission. Correct. And they have to accept or reject, is that how it works? Well both agencies, the City of San Bernardino right. and the county first had to agree to that. Okay. And then it went before LAFCO. Right. For LAFCO to then analyze it to determine if it was feasible. Okay. And if it made sense and if it was going to produce a positive outcome. Right. And that it's sustainable. And, and so you don't need to go to your voters on this. This is a LAFCO decision. This is a LAFCO decision. LAFCO approved it. Okay. And it was a unanimous approval okay. by LAFCO. And then there is a. Each county has its own LAFCO correct? I believe so. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And it is then going to the uh, community right. with the option to protest it. And let's talk about that because there is um, a financial ramification as a result of this. And that is that there will be an annual parcel tax. Correct. Of $143.92. Is that for every property regardless of size? Or is yes. that the average? The, the, the each parcel okay. will be assessed that. It's about $12 a month. Correct. Money that had not been required to be paid in the past. What have you heard from your constituents? You know, it's not a lot of money, but, you know, money's money. And, and certainly it would be preferable not to have to uh, right. take that pill. Uh, it is a difficult pill to have to swallow. Right. However, in order to be able to increase the level of service, mm -hmm. uh, it does require that there is this additional fee or tax right. that will allow us to then free up resources in the general fund, which will allow us then to be able to reallocate resources to other needs. And, and so it's a real benefit because right. that additional investment, if you will, will allow the city to be able to provide a higher uh, level of performance uh, for, fire, for fire service. Uh, what about uh, public safety in the policing arena? Because you do have your own police department. Correct. And there are several cities that contract that out, but that is not on the table. That is not. That is correct. Why? But it, this will allow us with the parcel tax because it will free up some resources mm. in the general fund. It will allow us then as our five-year plan to be able to have the resources to be able to fund the addition of sworn officers. Because that has become a sore spot. That with it, the bankruptcy we've seen officer numbers drop. We've seen crime tick up a bit. Is that fair? Um, it, but not just in San Bernardino. Of course, that's uh, absolutely I mean, accurate. You're seeing it throughout. Absolutely uh, accurate. You know. And so the police department will remain under the purview of your proud city. Correct. And with this uh, successful annexation, it'll allow us to then to be able to start to right, rebuild. Of okay, I am so glad you're here. I wish you the best of luck on your upcoming state of the city. Thank His you. name is Kerry Davis. He is the mayor of San Bernardino. We are San Bernardino strong. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and this is Charter Local Edition. Thank you.